Hi everybody, Dr. Jamie here from Dissertation to Defense. And today I wanted to talk to you about resources that can make your life writing your dissertation so much easier. I wish somebody had shown me these resources when I wrote my dissertation. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is a way to keep track of all of those peer-reviewed journal articles that you're pulling, the books and all of the resources. And the first one I wanted to talk about is called Mendeley, Mendeley Desktop. And Mendeley, you can sync all of your files, all of that research, everything that you've saved. You can sync to Mendeley, you can sign in, it's cloud-based so you can access it elsewhere. You can um, then keep track of everything. Um, you can see I have a tremendous amount of research here. Look, and I'm just on E, oh, okay. Um, so I can pull things by author. I can use a general search. Maybe I am searching for something that used an ANOVA. Okay, look at that. All of the research that relied on an ANOVA model comes up. Or maybe I wanted to know something about bystander intervention. Okay, all of that comes up. So when you save your articles to Mendeley, I recommend that you use tags so that you can find this later. So uh, you can decide what kind of tags that you want to use, but um, I used things like bullying perpetration, bullying victimization, um, programs, negative impact, school culture, and it makes it much easier than when you want all of the articles related to something specific, you can enter those tags and it'll come up. You can search by author and you can even view differently. I can view by library citations and I can select APA, which is what I use, or I can just view what comes out library as a table. All right, and I can see the year things were published, the journal, when it was added, and so on and so forth. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is called Lit Assist. Lit Assist is a program that was written by a Grand Canyon University doctoral graduate to help you write Chapter 2, The Dreaded Literary Review. Uh, I cannot stress enough how helpful I found Lit Assist. I used it to write Chapter 2, and it was written... Uh, to make Grand Canyon University requirements, but it can be used across the board. Uh, it can track the general information. I wanna load my work into the program here so I can select the type of article it is. I can write the, the title of it. I can give all that information for citation, the web URL, keywords to help me find it easier later because I can also search by tags. I can write a summary of the article here or the abstract and look what else it'll track things about the scope, instruments used, the purpose of the study, significance, uh, methods, because there's, you know, there's a section in chapter two where you need to support your method by showing that everybody else interested in your topic also uses those methods. The results of the research, Future research, here's where you're going to find your gap. And you can track it right here and make sure your gap is well supported by just tracking it under future research. And there's even a section to help you um, tie everything to your 10 strategic points, okay? So again, that's called Lit Assist and it's wonderful for chapter two. Make sure you let them know you're from Grand Canyon University uh, when you sign up. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was simply some of the things that we can find in the library that you may not be aware of, all right? Um, most libraries will let you search by database, all right? So we're gonna browse the databases by title. Almost everybody does that. And I have the first one I wanted to show you, go to database by title, D, and look. 
there is an entire database of dissertations and theses globally, so you can see what other people have done with their dissertation, how it was written, so on and so forth. And if you're a Grand Canyon University student, you can find it just for Grand Canyon University dissertations and theses. So if you had a specific question, what did other people do to support using archival data? How did they write about the validity of using archival data when I don't have an instrument? You can go look. You can type, go to Grand Canyon dissertations and theses and type in archival data and start going through other approved published dissertations. Okay. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you is uh, SAGE research methods. So again, database by title, go to S. And we have SAGE research methods and SAGE research methods cases. And there's even SAGE research methods statistics. SAGE has some wonderful resources there for researchers. All right. And the first thing that I would like you to see is the research tools that they have available. So look at that. So let's say you're just getting started and you need help planning your project. Well, you, we're not allowed to cite Creswell, and sometimes Creswell, maybe he's not covering what you need to know exactly. So I can start with their project planner. And look at that. It'll give me an overview, the philosophy of research, defining my topic, reviewing the literature. And we always review the literature first because that's where we find our gap. Okay, and that's how we develop a question. And then from your question, we can develop our research design. So maybe you want now to help get help developing a research design. Or maybe you just want to look at a methods map. I think I have that up here, right? I want to look at a methods map. Let's see, watch methods come alive, quick definitions, learn about quantitative methods, um, design a research project. There's all kinds of help here. But this methods map is one that I consulted quite a bit in the beginning of my dissertation when I was trying to make everything work out. And um, it's going to load. There we go. Okay. So look, here's all kinds of research methods, research ethics, planning research. All right, look at that. Hypothesis, review of the literature, research proposals, research questions, or maybe I am interested in what goes on with quantitative data analyses. Look, multivariate models, probabilities, statistical inferences, statistical packages. Or maybe I'm interested in qualitative data analysis and qualitative methods. Look at that. Media analysis, narratives, coding. There's all kinds of things here that can help you. So I, I cannot stress enough how SAGE research methods can give you a leg up and help in your research. Now the next resource I wanted to share with you is called RecyteWorks. RecyteWorks.com. It's free. It was created by Harvard. And what this does is it checks your references in text and your reference page. You should use this every single time you do any major writing. It will help you get it done and you'll save yourself weeks worth of editing headaches later on your dissertation if you've tracked this regularly. So RecyteWorks is simple. You simply log in with your Google account. <coughs> you select Check Now, and you can upload your dissertation. I'm just going to use a regular paper that I wrote at some point in time. And I'll select Check. OK. And the first thing that popped up here, this is a warning about my reference page, the long list at the end. If you don't have it formatted correctly, this comes up. Now, you can have it look right but you need to use the appropriate style on the home page of a Word document for your reference page. If you're a GCU student, you're going to want to use APA style when you type all of your references in your long list. And if you've used that, this won't come up. Okay. Now, then I can look. My in-text citations, look, there are 11 mistakes. 
And I thought I was pretty good with that. Well, look at let's look at number two here. Zhu and Jin. It says author mismatch. Look, I forgot Lynch. So it should be Zhu, Lynch, and Jin. Okay. And if I'm not sure where in my paper that happened, this if I I can click on the uh, on the magnifying glass and I can see what I wrote in my paper. Okay. Uh, the other thing I can do then is check my reference page. Look, reference list. There are five. Five mistakes on the reference list. Here's one. Darvish and Nazari. Not found in the document. So it looks like at some point in time I decided not to use Darvish and Nazari and deleted something, and but I failed to delete it in my reference list. So using this on a regular basis will really make your life much easier. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about has more to do with your statistical analyses and uh, what's available for you there. Now I'm going to use the Grand Canyon University um, network to show what they have available. Your college may have something different. I encourage you to check. Okay, lots of colleges can get you access to programs for free or for discounted. And my college, my alma mater, has done just that. Okay, we can take a look and see two commonly used uh, softwares right here. Quantitative software, SPSS, usually that's the free software offered by colleges. So I can use it on Grand Canyon University's site or I can download it and use a group licensure that has to be renewed every year. Or look, there's the qualitative SOX software, MaxQDA. And MaxQDA can do all kinds of things from helping you transcribe audio and video files, import and analyze Twitter data, focus groups. It can help you visualize results, even create statistical frequency tables. Okay, so that's pretty important. And if you go to Grand Canyon University, it's free. It might be free at your university, I'm not sure. Now, if you're a quantitative student, like I was, and you're not 100% confident in your statistical abilities, these next two resources can be a lifesaver. I personally used layered statistics. Layered, uh, my school provided at a discount. You can purchase it by the month, three months, years, uh, a yearly purchase, whatever, um, they were absolutely wonderful to use. Now, layered statistics can help you select your test. What test should I use? Look at that. I was looking for group differences, so I was interested in ANOVAs and t-tests and things like that. But you, are you looking to predict relationships? What are you doing? Then they can help you select the appropriate statistical test. In addition to helping you select these things, they offer a step-by-step -step guide with pictures on how to run SPSS to do what you need. They'll help you set up your data, they'll help you step-by-step -step analyze your data, and even offer you ex explanations along the way. I personally preferred layered because I wanted to do my own work. I wanted to analyze my data. And I got to interpret my data after I analyzed it, but I wasn't good with SPSS, so Layered was very helpful. Now, the other resource that's out there is called Intellectus Statistics. We can see that right here, okay? And Intellectus Statistics, our school, GCU, offers at a discount. Um, it can help you analyze your data and even help you write what you need to say after it interprets the findings for you, okay? So it gives a narrative description for your basic statistical tests, okay? Um, and you might want something like that, or maybe you want both. So that's all I have for you today. Remember, it's Dissertation to Defense, so I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and like and subscribe, and that way you always get the latest new and up-and-coming videos. All right? Thank you so much.